Hey everybody, welcome to episode 15. Um, it's Friday, that's, that's a good thing. Um, uh, today I'm going to be focusing on um, the comic books again, specifically the X-Men, the Uncanny X-Men. Um, and I'm going to give you more in-depth uh, my experience with the comic book and you know with the X-Men in general. Um, I'm, it's it's definitely going to be a multi-episode um, video, and I don't want to put them all back together because it'll probably, I'd say, a minimum of at least four or five episodes. So I'll start with the first one here. Uh, I'm going to touch. On, I kind of touched on when I started collecting the X-Men um, in a previous video on comic books when I was just getting into comic books in general, um, which was right around that 1984 uh, area, summer of 1984. But um, I'll probably cover in this one the first crossover. I'm using the milestones as a, as a milestone um, to kind of give you certain periods of, uh, of my collecting and, and where I started and where I stopped. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of a self-contained area. It pretty much spans 1984 to 1989, more or less, maybe into 1990 a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's a, actually it's a very short-lived period of time if you think about it. Um, you know, you think about the time you collected com or I've collected comics over my life. Uh, my hardcore X-Men collecting was in a pretty small pocket of time. I mean, five years, more or less. Um, but a lot happened those five years. A lot of important things happened those five years. And what I think is probably the best stuff has ever happened in those five years. Now. Um, all right, let's get into, well, sorry, let's get into, I'll give you the other screen up here. Um, oops. There you go. And then, uh, so back to this list. These are all these CBR files of the comics. Um, like I said, right now, actually, as far as physical copies of the X-Men, I still have most of my copies. I'm not going to pull them all out, but I've got most of my copies of these comics from this time period. Um, I believe I sold, I bundled up, I think, Fall of the Mutants and Inferno and had sold those off as bundles on eBay back when I was doing my mass eBay liquidation. Um, I, I got pretty decent money for them. You know, I don't really, those were, not, those were not my original comics. I'd long since got rid of my original comics, but you know, to buy them a, the third time, I really don't care to. Um, the comics themselves, I mean, I know the, the paper and all that stuff and, you know, the value and everything. I, I really don't care so much about the physical copy of it. Um, I care more about the, um, you know, the story. And I know the story so well. And, I mean, I know the page as well. You know, if I do forget something or I want to go back and reread it and, you know, indulge myself, I've got the CBR files. I also do have... Um, I don't pull them all out, but I do have all of these essential guides. Uh, there's, uh, I think that's the first one. Uh, I've got the essential guides up to volume eight, I believe, which is where I, I stopped. You know, more or less. I think I wanted, I want volume nine, but to get that one because that has all the Jim Lee version comics in it. It's so those for top dollar everywhere I see it. So I'm not really worried about finishing off my essentials guide. One thing I, of course I do always like about the essentials guide, especially as an artist, is it gives you every page in black and white, you know, so I can sit there and I can, you know, not be distracted by the color and just look right at the line art, look at the inking, um, you know, and I really enjoy that. Especially some of my favorite artists of all time have worked on, on the X-Men. Um, but yeah, like I said before, I kind of started, I think my first comic off the shelf was, uh, I believe it was 186, The Life Death, um, or it was somewhere around there. Let's see, what month would that have been? October? Um, no, I think it was before that. Yeah, it was. I think I think it was this comic. I, I know it was either Storm or Rogue on the cover. I can't remember exactly at that time because I got a few of them. Like I said, I got the first appearance of Rogue here. Um in those bundles from Rochester Book Center. And, um, you know, and of course there was the Wolverine Rogue thing. And, and it's funny because, you know, 
I think with the X-Men, I started out, my favorite character was Wolverine. Wolverine's what got me into it. I kind of talked about my experience with Wolverine. And by and large, he was my favorite X-Men. And, you know, I still like him to this day. However, you know, something happens to young boys right around 12 years old. And that happened right around this period here. Um probably from 80 sorry 80 more 85 85 going into 86 and that is of course puberty and ever since then all of my favorite comic book characters have always been the girls i've always liked the females the most i mean i i still like the male characters love think colossus looks amazing love to draw colossus you know i like uh you know i like wolverine i like a lot of those characters um but I really pay attention to the to the group to the ladies and what the girls are doing. And of course, you know, it went from Wolverine, you know, past the torch on to teenage me with what with Rogue. And she was my, you know, my proxy comic book crush, you know, proxy comic book girlfriend. She's the one I like the most. Um, and she's pretty much why I kept re reading the X-Men. And so let's go. Let's fast forward to the beginning of Mutant Massacre, because this would be the, fir <clears throat> the first milestone or the first crossover event that happened um, at that time. So it's a good place to start with, because if I, if I do this by milestones, it's easier. Uh, you know, there might be a few issues here and there I'll pick up, but most of them I think are featured, most of these milestones. And uh, so I'm going to flip out to the milestones. Where are they at? So, uh, just a quick word on the Dark Phoenix. Um, it was before my time. I mean, you know, it was it was very it was 1980 pretty much, and so John Byrne's work on X Men, and you know, all of that I didn't discover till later on. You know, maybe a couple few years down the road, and um, you know, and I didn't go back that far to collect back issues. So, it really wasn't probably until like the 90s that I really got the chance to go back and read Dark Phoenix Saga and Days of Future Past. Um, and I know they're, I know Dark Phoenix Saga is probably the number one favorite of all Marvel crossover events, or Mar Marvel events, or sorry, um, well, X-Men events, maybe Marvel events. But uh, it's, I like it. I'm not crazy for it. I really... When I think of Jean Grey and Marvel Girl, as I call her, instead of just calling her Jean Grey, I think of her more from X Factor. And the reason being is because X Factor started up right around that time. And, of course, X Factor is part of the Mute Massacre. And I really liked her. She's probably my, was my second favorite comic book character next to, well, maybe third. Rogue, She-Hulk, and um, Marvel Girl. Uh, specifically from... Uh, the uh, X Factor, you know, I, I, going back, I was, I didn't like her as much back then. I don't know. I know it seems weird. Um, and then same thing with Days of Future Past. I really didn't like it that much. I thought it was okay. I mean, I know everybody likes that, and you know, they base movies on it, and everything. But to me, it just it didn't hit at the right time. Um, and Mutant Massacre hit at the right time. I mean, I was going, I was in seventh, eighth grade, you know, junior high. Perfect time. Um, so let's get into Mutant Massacre. Where is it? Right? Mutant Massacre right here? Yep, Mutant Massacre. I don't know why the cover is... Uh, I can't remember the name of the artist is or does the cover. i surprised it wasn't um, you know, John Romita Jr. I mean, he was the one pretty much doing X-Men at that time. Um, I'll get into my John Romita Jr. <laughs> love-hate relationship with him as well. Um, but let's start out here with Mutant Massacre. So we're going to go to issue 210. Um, so I, you know, I bought 210 in junior high right off the shelf, right as it was starting, and I was buying a lot, mostly X Factor and these comics as they were going. So I was kind of reading this firsthand. Um, at the time, I got to say, I didn't, I don't think they marketed it as the Mutant Massacre at first. Um, so I just kind of, I just kind of assumed it was the just the ongoing series. I think at some point they call it the Mutant Massacre, 
but it, I don't think they marketed it that way. There weren't like posters. Like I vividly remember the poster for Fall of the Mutants, but I don't remember a poster for Mutant Massacre. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I remember that. Um, you know, it starts out with some John Romita art. A pretty strong John Romita art. I mean, I, I like this art. This one was pretty decent. Um, again, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna flip through this pretty quick. Uh, really like Dazzler with the dark hair. I thought that was really nice looking. Um, yeah, it's just his his style. I mean, it was so good then. I know he was younger, and I know he's older now. But I don't know what happened to his style. It just he used to draw attractive women most of the time. Um, you know, he drew some good action. You know, he had some nice panel designs and stuff. Maybe it was the Times, maybe. I, You know, I, maybe editorial has something to do with that. Maybe the Jim Shooter years has something to do with that. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was. Um, there's our Rogue. You know, I thought she was... Uh, I, I, there's a I, there are instance in here I don't like. I don't like the way he draws Rogue. Um, she, she's fine there. I like the cool punky hair. Like the more kind of mullety hair. I liked that. Uh, not as much as the skunk hair, I like the skunk hair the most. Um, but I did like the mullety kind of punk hair too as well. But yeah, when she goes when she goes to the salon and she gets dolled up, I mean, from the back of the head, I was like, oh, I like the hair, it looks nice. And then she turns around, oh, God, she looks god-awful there. I mean, she looks like an old woman, you know, like, uh, you know, some kind of like old, you know, kind of, uh, I can't remember what the name of the lady is, the the villain in 101 Dalmatians. She's just got that kind of vibe going, which I don't know, some people like that. I don't, not on my rogue. I don't like that there. Um, but I think he kind of softens her up as it goes, you know. Um, you know, he does everybody else pretty good. I, you know, I liked his, his Kitty Pride. thought she looked good. Um, I think this is kind of where they're morphing into her newer costume that she wore into Excalibur. But, uh, I just keep checking the time so I can get lost in this one. Um, you know, and then X Factor shows up. You know, I liked X Factor a lot at this time. Um, as my one friend can tell from the first day I met him when I talked about X Factor quite a bit. Um, you know, he's he always still comments about that. Oh, you literally liked X Factor. I did. I mean, it's not that I didn't. Uh, I think it was just new and it was fresh. And like I said, I really liked Marvel Girl in it. I like Cyclops as well. I thought he looked cool. You know, he wasn't as douchey then. You know, he still was douchey, but he wasn't as douchey then. They kind of reigned back on the doucheness. Um, that's a word. But, uh, you know, I, I liked X Factor. And then going into this, you know, here's Wolverine's showing up. Um, you know, so it goes into X Factor. The other character I really liked, female character, was um, Spider Woman. The. Um, What's her name? Carpenter. Julie Carpenter? Was that her name? I can't remember what her real name was. I know it's not Jessica Drew. Um, Candy? No, I think it's Julie Carpenter, I think. But anyways, I, I love this. It's my favorite iteration of Marvel Girl is the X-Factor green costume. The red one's okay, but I like the green one specific. Um, I don't care. If, I mean, I kind of like the one with the skull cap when she had her whole head and her hair just out as a ponytail. But I think... Because of that Marvel Universe drawing, that illustration of the Marvel Universe, I really like the her red hair flowing out of the green mask. And then, of course, the costume. Same thing, Cyclops' favorite costume he's ever worn is this one here. You know, the blue and white one's fine, too, but the yellow and blue uh, I really like most, even more so than his classic costume. Um, Angel, same thing. I mean, I guess, you know, X, Iceman's Iceman. Beast, I could... I liked the hairless beast. I also liked the hairy beast. Um, I guess I like the hairless beast more. I really don't like what they've kind of done with them ever since um, was the early 2000s when Josh Whedon and I can't remember the artist was and they made them more animal looking. And I didn't like that at all. I like I, if, I, if I like my furry beast, it's the original furry beast uh, way they drew them. Um, you know, obviously. I like everything the original. I don't like change. Fear change. Um... You know, Boom Boom's in here. You know, this is pretty... I, you know, I like Freedom Force. I thought Freedom Force was cool. Um, you know... You know, the, the whole... Mutant, I, I'm not going to get into the story, because maybe some people haven't read Ma Mutant Massacre, and then those who have know the story. Um, you know, just kind of the skinny of it is there's a... 
a, a force that's uh, hunting down and killing mutants, um, and they kind of all have to kind of act, work together to kind of combat this threat to mutant kind. Um, oh, that's about as far into the story as I get. I don't want to give too many spoilers away. I don't. It's not that I don't want to give spoilers away. I, I'm not here to talk about the sport story specific. I'm here to tell tell you my opinions and how this you know how this kind of plays into my life. Um, but yeah, really like that. Uh, let's see what some of the other issues in this. Um, oh yeah, the 25th anniversary issues. It's funny, you know, with the 25th anniversary issues, um, I had bought, uh, I had bought, did I, oh yeah, I did buy this off the news, well, the, you know, bookstore, you know, the spinner racks. However, I remember walking down to Kmart in Rochester and Kmart had, it wasn't in the toy section, I, I don't even know exactly what section it was, but like on an end cap, they had a whole bunch of comic books in these bags, kind of like how, you know, Rochester Book Center would do it, you know, like the mystery bag. Well, I mean, you knew what you're kind of getting, but you didn't know the third one in the middle. And they were in bag, like licensed, actual printed bags for Marvel Comics. And they were cheap. They were, I think they were 99 cents, I want to say. They could have been a dollar fifty. You got pretty much about three dollars or two dollars and twenty-five cents for the comics. I think they were ninety-nine cents, and so I just thought it was a cheap way to buy a bunch of comics quick. So I scooped up like five or six of them. You know, I mean, I, I might even have bought ten dollars worth of them, and I took them home. And almost every single one of the bags had the middle section. The, you know, the mystery comic were all the twenty-fifth anniversary comics. Now I already had the. X-Men one, so that was fine. They were reprints, too. They are second printings. But it was fine. Um, again, I didn't care about the printings back then, but it was fine that I had doubles of the copy, but I didn't get a lot of the other ones. I I, I had the, the Fantastic... I was still collecting the Fantastic Four still, I believe, at that time, because She-Hulk was in it. But I don't think I had the, 20, the 25th anniversary. I think it was 275 or 295. I can't remember the, the, the number. 265? Um... But they had, uh, I think it was a Web of Spider-Man in there, uh, the Web of Spider-Man anniversary, or maybe it was the Amazing Spider-Man, but regardless, I bought a bunch of comics that I normally wouldn't buy just to kind of, I think that's where I discovered West Coast Avengers, I want to say, but don't don't quote me on that. I think that's where I discovered a West Coast Avengers comic, um, because I wasn't collecting them right away. I didn't collect them when they first came out. I got on like maybe like issue, I don't know, 10 so eight or nine or ten somewhere around there all right so then here's the marauders they show up um i really like vertigo i really ticks me off too because um i don't own a lot of marvel legends I mean, the only marvel legend that i really i mean i have a shadow cat or not shadow cat um scarlet witch up there but i've got uh, my favorite and i waited a while to get her because they didn't have a version i liked but i finally got um put this on full camera I got uh, a rogue finally and this is the this is the rogue that I like the most this is the down under rogue my only problem is and you could pop the heads off I wish that somebody would do a head um, and do the skunk hair because this is more of the Jim Lee hair um, and again I, I'm not a huge fan of Jim Lee um, I mean I think he does are okay but I really like Mark Silvestri's rogue probably the best and you know, Arthur, Arthur Adams is probably a strong second. And uh, she, the costume's correct. It's the Down Under uh, costume. The hair is just wrong. Um, and it would be neat if, you know, they did like a few versions where they showed, like they did like the fall, because all of her costumes were at the time kept morphing. She morphed her costume a lot, and it'd be neat if she could do kind of like a, a mismatch of her different costumes. But she's, her and Scarlet Witch are the only ones I own right now. Um... And they have a Marauder set, and the only problem with the Marauder set is, you know, I really only want, I mean, I would like, oh, what's her face in the background there, um, Ar is it not Arch Arclight, Archlight? Yeah, there's Arclight. And, and uh, Vertigo, I really like the look of Vertigo's character. Um, let me go back so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, I really liked Vertigo's character there. Um, oops. And, uh, but, you know, I don't mind getting the, the dudes, too, but the problem is they that's not the set. That set's 
got like I think strife in it or another character that isn't really one on my my list sorry I dropped my pen here um isn't really on my list but uh hold on I can go diving for it Ugh. Anyways, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't really like Strife on the team. I like this specific, specific version of the Marauders just because they were in the um, Mute Massacre. And it says Massacre there. Maybe that's where they got it. I, I'm not sure exactly, but um, but anyways, so they show up. And, you know, they, they're the ones behind the, they're the ones hunting them down. And, uh, you know, we still get some great art here. I uh, can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I think they're still, yeah, they're still in the sewers. Um, and then it goes in, there's the X-Factor uh, 25th anniversary. And I had this because I was collecting X-Factor at the time. And I want to say that was November of 86. So, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, this was end of uh, ninth grade in high school. No, 86, November of 80, 86. No, no, I was still in junior high. I'm in 8th uh, grade at the time. Oh, I haven't switched school. I'm still at West uh, Junior High. I didn't switch over to Ruther yet. Um, so, yeah. Who did the artwork on this? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, it is Walter Simonson. Okay. I didn't know if it was Simon Simonson or um, Geis, Jackson Geis, or Butch Geis, or whatever his name is. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so it goes into, there's a lot of, it crosses over between X-Factor and, um, and the X-Men, I believe. I don't think it, I don't think it covers the New Mutants. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. No, it does. Huh? There we go. It does go into the New Mutants. Okay, but the New Mutants, I, I kind of, I've had, like, uh, also a, a love-hate relationship with the New Mutants. I don't, I like them. I like, so I think Danny Moonstar is my favorite. Um, however, I really do not like... Bill Senkovic or Senkwich or Senkevich or how you want to say the name. I don't really like his art very well, and I didn't like it in this. Um, I just don't like it. I know a lot of people are... I, I'm going to see we're very contrarian with most people. There's a lot of things that people consider like sacred and classics, and i got to say I don't agree with most of it. I, maybe it's just my own person. I'm not trying to like be a contrarian. I'm not trying to be, you know, you know just being, you know, a, a, a jerk. I'm just saying... Um, it just didn't appeal to me, um, and you know, in the New Mutants, it was hit or miss with the art. Um, the stories also were a little hit or miss. I think when Louise Simonson took over, it got better. Um, and uh, so when they did cross, whenever they had one of these crossovers, I I had the New Mutants issues, or at least most of them, just to be a completist. But um, they weren't. I didn't read them right away, and I kind of glossed over most of the New Mutants during the cross crossovers. Um, you know, I think I, I have gone back and read them all just so I know the story, but I'm not as well versed in them as all, as all, at all. Who did the artwork at this time? Oh, okay. Jackson Geis is doing the artwork here. Okay. So he's pretty strong. Um, he, his girls are really nice looking, you know, he, he does, he's a little, I don't know who, it might be the inker in this who inked this, uh, Kyle Baker, uh, Binking's a little rough on this, just because I'm sure that uh, Geis did a lot better job on Colossus, and the inker looked like he really phoned this one in. Uh, I mean, he phoned it in on a lot of them, I think. I think Geis's pencils were probably, especially look at that storm face. They were a lot stronger in the pencils, and I think this inker just kind of, you know, probably had to get it out in time, because it's part of a thing they couldn't fall behind with this one so he probably just kind of farted this one out you know no offense to the guy but um i've seen his artwork and i mean you could tell his artwork is good by his by his panels and his composition but the execution of the lines and stuff look really wonky uh yeah, uh, yeah. warlock's kind of an interesting character to draw so he's not a good he's not a good uh a gauge of a good inker or artist, although there are some that draw him really good. Um, you know, there's Danny Moonstar, my favorite character. She doesn't look appealing to me. I'm not a big fan of the art. 
she looks okay in this. But again, I think it chocks it. I see she's got a, you know, she's, you know, Native American, so she has a specific face. I think sometimes they kind of make her look too rough or too uh, stark on her features. Uh, you know, they make her look too old, I guess is what I'm trying to say. She's a younger girl, so... You know, that's the, that was the thing back in the day. I was a teenager at the time. These were the teenage mutants. And this is who those people were supposed to speak to me. This is like, oh, these are your people. It's just like, you know, I don't know if I've got into this yet, but I don't really care for people my own age. And I would rather have hang, hung out with the adults, you know, especially hang out with like the X-Men, you know. I mean, Rogue was probably 19 or 20. She was definitely out of high school at this time. She could have even been 21, 22. I can't remember what they aged her at. You know, Wolverine obviously was an older guy, but Storm was probably in her late 20s, maybe even early 30s at this time. These are the adults. I wanted to hang out with the adults. I didn't want to hang out with a bunch of teenagers, you know, even though I was a teenager. Uh, I did have this issue. I got it in one of those packs because I wasn't a huge Thor fan. I want to, here we go again. I'm going to piss everybody off. I'm not a huge fan of Walt Simonson. <laughs> Uh, I've seen good work by him, but by and large, when he gets really, really Walt Simonson, -y, I could, I don't care for it. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that's sacrilege, but I, I'm sorry, I'm just not a big fan of it. It's just it's just when during Inferno, man, he just butchers everybody. Looks terrible. Um, so I wasn't really a big Thor reader at the time. You know, I thought Thor was cool. I like Beta Ray Bill. I thought he looked neat. I thought Sif was, you know appealing you know uh i thought hello was pretty cool as a villain you know loki had kind of like he was a toss-up on loki guy sometimes i liked him sometimes i didn't uh but yeah so we're going through here oh he even goes into power pack yeah i wasn't a huge power pack fan i wasn't collecting much of it uh i know um there was a i can't, I can't remember who is it uh bogdanova or bogdanova how do you say that last name. I don't think this is the penciler. They had a couple of good pencilers on Power Pack, but um, I don't. I think Brett Blevins may have done it. I, I like Brett Blevins' work on, on New Beans, by the way. That's when, when, when Louis Simonson was writing it and Brett Blevins was doing the art, I liked New Mutants, and that kind of was this time. Um, but uh, it's not this issue. There, there must be an issue somewhere close to this, because I know uh, Jean Grey and Scott are in it. And he draws them really well. But, yeah, and back to the Thor. You know, a lot of times when they did these these milestones or these these crossover events, uh, which they didn't do, I mean, this was kind of new at the time. They didn't do a lot of crossover events at this time. So there's only a handful of them. And most of them started in the 80s. So I would, I'm going to say... Uh, that, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought about the crossover events. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't care for a lot of them when they went past, like, say, like, the mutant titles. Uh, you know, I would only get, you know, I'd get X-Men first, X-Factor second, and possibly the mutants. Um, so if it went over to, like, Power Pack or Thor, I, I you know, it may have here and there picked up an issue or got one way up way after the fact just because i saw it you know 50 cents or something oh that's part of that so i'll pick it up but um that was a good cover i like that one you know now oh okay rick leonardi i don't think rick leonardi does the cover i think it's jj on the cover or john ramita jr i don't see his initials but i think it is um but no, the interior, okay, Rick Leonardi, I hated, I couldn't stand when you would be on a roll with um, Mark Silvestri and the X-Men, like, oh, I'm digging it, dig it, love this, love this, and then, bam, they hit you with the Leonardi issue, guest guest penciling. Oh, I hate his art. Can't stand his art. I've seen a couple of drawings he's done here and there that I sort of enjoy, but by and large, when Leonardi was a guest artist, I was like, God damn it. Pardon my French, or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I just don't like his... Oh, God, look at this. Storm is terrible. I mean, it's, she's not bad from the side, but anybody can draw a storm from the side. Um, 
drawing her from the front takes a little more skill. You know, with her mohawk. Again, my favorite storm, hands down, all time, mohawk storm. It's the it's the storm that I started with. You know, I mean, I do like the original. You know, storm uh, that Dave Cockrum did. I like the outfit. Thought that's very appealing. Uh, it, even when Sylvester took over and he kind of gave her the suit that kind of morphed into what would become the Jim Lee suit. Eh, it's okay. But X-Men Storm, the Mohawk, you know, and I, I even liked it better when she wore just the, the halter top and the collar. You know, the jacket was okay, but I really like that look. This this guy's not doing a good. I mean, this is a decent drawing here. Uh, I don't know what he, he just didn't. It, that or the inker screwed it up. And this is kind of a weak sauce drawing. That's a weak sauce drawing. But um, yeah, she's trying to go for a little contrapasto there, but it's, it's just not doing it for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's such a cool-looking character with that mohawk. Um, very appealing. I mean, as far as if you want to say females in the X-Men She's probably, of actual X-Men characters, like of this time, I'm going to say it's probably goes, for me, it goes Rogue, number one. Um, I'm going to say it's a toss-up between Psylocke, the Betsy Braddock Psy Psylocke, the one before she becomes Ninja Jim Lee Psylocke. Um, it's either her or Storm, probably Storm, then Psylocke, um, and then uh, Dazzler. I think that's, yeah, that's all four of them were in, in the comic at the time. Uh, it really, I like Shadow Cat, but Shadow Cat I more associate with older X-Men, or I associate her with Excalibur. And, um, uh, Jubilee's okay, but I find Jubilee, all Jubilee is just Jim Lee's just ripped off Kitty Pride. It's just Kitty Pride, but just made her a little different, made her Asian. It's just like, that's all it is. Um, so I, Jubilee's okay. I, mean, I don't dislike the character. It's just I find her exactly that. She's just a derivative of Kitty Pride. You got to be young, smart, but you know, talks to herself. You know, hello, Megan, kind of girl. So, um, as a reference to Young Justice, uh, which I like that archetype, but it's been done to death. I mean, how many times are we going to see the, you know, that character? Um, Let's see, they're going into here. Yeah, ba, 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 ba. Okay, that's classic. Uh, number 11, love that. I've drawn that cover a bunch of times. Uh, I really liked it. Yeah. Um, Simonson's back on it, yeah. Yeah, Simonson was doing um, doing the X-Factor. And that's I think that's where I kind of like started to drift out of X-Factor right about the time Simonson took over. I mean, I know he did the first appearance of Apocalypse. And, you know, they had the, you know, the... The horse of Apocalypse. Um, I, I'm going to go on another limb here. I'm not a huge fan of Apocalypse. And, the, and, and that wasn't the character. It was more so because of Walt Simonson's art, which turned me off to it. So I really wasn't into it at the time. Um, yeah, so we're going through here. Oh, you can get a Mutant Massacre Continues the Daredevil. That's weird. Um, I also was not reading Daredevil at the time. Um, the, you know, the classic Frank Miller Daredevil, um, I didn't read it at the time. I read it later after the fact in reprints, you know, or collected works, but um, I didn't read it at the time. You know, I thought Daredevil was interesting. I kind of liked the character, but at the same time, I, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Frank Miller. <laughs> I know everybody loves him, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. I find the I find the Daredevil when Daredevil gets too Catholicy, if you know what I mean, because the comic gets very Catholicy. I'm not that I have anything against Catholic or Catholicism. But I'm not Catholic myself, but I mean, just it's too steeped in like the Catholicy thing. And I guess maybe if you're Catholic or you're into that, you like that. But I don't know. I just I just found it too uh, off-putting. So it's constantly Catholic. You know, everything's about his his faith and the blah blah blah. And I was, oh God, I don't want to bring bring don't bring religion into my comic books. Uh, why does this seem like I'm going backwards here? I don't know, I'll go forward. Okay, uh, so we're going through the Daredevil. Daredevil fights Sabretooth. Yada yada yada. Okay, love this cut. I've got. Uh, I can't pull it out at the time. I'll go through these. I, I did a whole bunch of um. 18 by 24 
uh, colored pencil drawings of um, a lot of my favorite covers. I just redrew the cover onto 18 by 24. So imagine I kind of cut the, I stop here, you know, because, you know, 11 by 17, if you were to blow that up, you would, you would, you know, for the ratio, it'd be more, I'd just knock off the top of the title list and you get the main image on 18 by 24. And I drew probably 20 of those. Um, I drew a few of them for my friends too. Uh, I was just bored a few years, well, I don't know, probably eight years ago, nine years ago. And uh, I was actually between jobs at the time and I needed something to do until I found a new job. Uh, I was the commissions weren't really coming in that great, and uh, I, this was before I jumped on Patreon. So, um, yeah, I needed something. I needed an outlet, and I wasn't really doing comics at the time. So I just went on this mad spree and just started redrawing all my favorite uh, comic book covers in colored pencil at eighteen by twenty-four on newsprint too. So they're not very archival. They're holding up okay because I've got them in a portfolio. Um, but uh, they are definitely fading. Uh, the wax is, you know, starting to yellow. The paper is starting, the acid in the paper is starting to affect it. So they'll probably deteriorate completely at some point. But um, I did a version of this. And this one still held up, hold, held up pretty good. I, I'm going to have to dig that out sometime, do a video on just that. Because there's a lot of them in there. It'd be a nice thing to see. I have to do it all on camera, though. Unless I could take some good digital photos of them. Um, but yeah, Alan Davis, I, I gotta say, I love Alan Davis's artwork. However, in this comic, I don't like the way he draws Rogue. I, I've seen him draw Rogue better. He does you know, Psylocke okay. You know, he does a better job with Storm. I think he oversimplifies her a little too much. He over, again, this may be... Let's go back to the inker. Uh, it's Paul Neary inking it. And Paul Neary's a good, he's a good penciler. Uh, you know, I... Maybe his inks are a little rough. I don't know. Sometimes you get two good artists, but they're not a good combination together, too. It's just, you know, something somewhere in between there's a disconnect. Like I said, this is definitely better than the Leonardi artwork, but this specific issue, I just found it to be just so minimalistic. Too much, I don't know, not enough detail. Uh, I mean, compositional-wise, it's fine. I mean, you know, and again, I just wasn't a big fan of how he drew Rogue. You know, my favorite character, if, 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 you, if you're doing a mediocre job on my favorite character, I'm, good chances I'm not going to like the artwork. Uh, it's pretty much the mainstay. I can overlook a bad composition or a you know, wonky perspective or wonky anatomy here and there, but you mess up my favorite character, <laughs> or you, you know, not necessarily mess them up, but you just do a, a so-so job. Um, I'm not going to like it. And then going in from one bad artist to the other, I cannot stand Barry Windsor Smith. And there's a lot of people who are going to shoot me for that one too. What, what do you mean? Uh, it is, yeah, it's Barry Windsor Smith. You know, oh, he's great. I didn't like his Conan stuff. I don't like his X Men stuff. I don't like Barry Windsor Smith. Uh, sorry to say, I just don't like his art. You know, she looks terrible. Rogue looks. Not great. She doesn't look terrible. Yeah, she looks terrible. Um, also, this suit she wears, this bodysuit, I know it's green, um, but it's supposed to be so dark. And when you see most of the time, like, where's the figure? I mean, it, it comes, it's black. You know, they'll use green for, like, rim lighting and stuff, just instead of, like, a blue or something, just to kind of denote lines. Sometimes even just use white. But, um, you know... When they do the green bodysuit and more green than black, I also don't like it. I find it off-putting. Um, you know, going through here, we're going on time. Ah, we're at 40 minutes, so let's try to wrap this up in, the, in five minutes. So regardless, um, this is where I started with X-Men pretty heavily. Like I said, this is a good milestone. Yeah, we're at the end anyways. Um, with the... Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Mutant Massacre. So I'll get into next time I cover X Men. I'm going to do Fall of the Mutants because that's when it came in the, in the order. And I and the Fall of the Mutants is when I really really started to like the X Men more so than I already did. And it's pretty much because of um, of Mark Silvestri. I mean, 
Chris Claremont wrote all of them, so it's never been a, a question of the writing. You know, I've always liked Chris Chris Claremont's writing on the X Men. Um, but uh, it, for me, it's the the what makes or breaks an X Men comic is the art, artist, and you know, you put a real Leonardi as a guest penciler, Barry Windsor Smith. You know, I like I said, I'm I'm up and down on, on John Romita Jr. Uh, you know, Byrne's always good, but Byrne did the older stuff. Uh, it, Paul Smith, it's okay. I don't have the visceral, uh, ooh, like I do when I get, see, like a Barry Windsor Smith, or I see a, um, a uh, what's his face, uh, a Rick Leonardi, but I'm not a huge fan of Paul Smith either. I mean, he's done, but he has done some good stuff that I do like, but I wasn't really a huge fan of him. Um, you know, and like I said, John Romita Jr., uh, there's some iconic comics of that time, which I kind of kind of skipped over because they happened after the fact. But, um, you know, I like the artwork in those, but, you know, sometimes it's, when it's off, it is so off, it's, it's, it's cringeworthy. Um, but yeah, so we'll do, uh, Follow the Means will get its own episode. Uh, Inferno, which is a big one for me, that's going to get its own episode. Where we go with Inferno? It's not pulling up Inferno. Oh, there it is. Inferno. Um, and then I have an Extinction Agenda on here, but that's pretty much... I pulled out on X-Men right... I think right after um, the Jim Lee run. And I I was lukewarm with the Jim Lee. When it first came out, it was impressive. Like everybody else, you know... Same thing like Todd McFarlane. Uh, you know, that whole camp of guys. You know, the 90s guys. The Image crew. It, it, with the exception of... of uh, what's his face? Uh, Mark Sylvester, which I love. Um, I didn't like his image stuff, though. I, I thought Cyberforce was okay, but I don't like his image. I didn't like the darkness or any of that stuff. But his X-Men stuff, oh, love it. Um, and so when uh, Jim Lee took over, I don't mind some of the Jim Lee books that he did, like, you know, the Rogue, you know, in the Savage Lands, Rogue coming back and, you know, fighting the Miss Marvel, that whole thing when she first comes back from the Siege Perilous. Um, I like those are okay, but once it got going into the 90s, and especially once the 90s X-Men started with the uh, with the X-Men, and then, uh, yeah, I, oof, oof. That was when I was getting out of comic books, and I just didn't like it at the time. So, really, for me, the cutoff is Inferno, and a few issues after that. Um, and I'll get to, I'll probably, I'll cover it after Inferno. There's the one issue which really was the, the heartbreaking break my heart episode issue which I was just like jaw drop I'm done with comics forever you killed my my uh, killed the love of my life I probably know what I'm talking about but I'll get to that when that happens um, but yeah so next we'll do fall of the mutants so all right I hope everybody liked my kind of meandering through uh, through mutant massacre um, but uh, I will catch you guys after the weekend. I'm going to take the weekend I off. I've got uh, some things to do. I'm not going to have my son this weekend, but I'm definitely going to be working to try to bang out some of these commissions I got piling up. Um, got to get them out. Got to get them out the door. So I'll probably be working on that extensively this weekend, um, and then uh, next Monday I'll pick up uh, with another um, with another. Uh, episode oh before i go real quick what do we got yeah we got a couple minutes i know i just came it literally just came but this is the um point dread with eagle talon for the motu uh, origins uh i haven't even opened the amazon box yet i bought it through amazon um i did have it originally pre-ordered on big bad toy store but they wanted like three or four dollars more plus their shipping and i've got amazon prime and yada 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 and I got a, and they, they haven't even got me my screech yet, which they should have got me before this, because this wasn't even supposed to be coming until, like, July, but regardless, I got it, it's in here, I'm not going to be doing an unboxing per se, this is probably what's going to be Monday's episode, I'm not going to do an unboxing per se, because I find them kind of, eh, but I'm going to take it out, I'm going to put it together, be fully assembled, so when I come to talk about it on Monday, it'll all be ready to go, I'm going to save the box and stuff, I'll I save the boxes on all this stuff, but um, yeah. So then I'll I'll, I'll do a comprehensive on this on Monday because I've been waiting for this for a very long time. 
Um, and I finally got it, so it's here. So I'll probably open that this weekend when I get a minute, put it together, and then uh, I'll pull down Gray Skull because it's going to go on top of Gray Skull, and we'll uh, I'll show that in the video. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys later, and see you Monday.